small language models. Oh, dude. What's the deal, man? So here's the thing that people probably don't realize. If you look at the last five years, every year, there's basically been a, a substantial improvement for any benchmark. But the thing that gets obfuscated is the fact that models are also getting bigger year over year. And so there is an interesting dynamic that happens where if you actually say, hey, for a model of a fixed size, oftentimes what you'll see is that the performance has been flat, right? Which suggests it's not that we're necessarily getting better at training models. It's just that these models are getting bigger and bigger. I feel like that is fundamentally what the scaling hypothesis is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's also this sense that people have that we are getting better at training models because we keep coming up with new architectures, new training paradigms, new ways of shuffling data. But if you do this analysis, it's interesting how striking it is that we actually haven't gotten that much better. So this goes to show that it's actually really hard to create better training paradigms for models. So I think small models are interesting because there are these litmus tests, basically, to see, are we actually improving the fundamental paradigm that we use to train these models. They're also just interesting because you can deploy them on device. They're environmentally more efficient and, and, and you know, overall cheaper to train. There's, you know, if you could train a smaller model that has the same performance as a bigger model, that's better, basically.